So um, this, this notion of using improvisation as a spiritual practice is something that I came to when I first learned improv and it's been with me for, that was 1987. Uh, and it's been with me since then. And so, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about today is sort of distilled from that. And, and, and I hope that it's clear and provocative and that we'll be able to continue a conversation with it. I want to chat about spirituality first, because this is a, this is a notion that is very elusive and changes colors depending on how you talk about it. So, um, I love, I grew up on the Tao Te Ching. Like that was one of my first spiritual texts, the Taoist book. And it says, that, so the Tao is the way or the flow of the natural order of things. It says, the Tao that can be named is not the true Tao. And so I think it's really important to mention that when we're talking about spirituality, that right up front we acknowledge it's this elusive thing that we're going to do our best to talk about it, but you know who knows what we're really saying. Um, and that it, it makes sense to have an effort to try to find some common language. So I do think it's important to distinguish spirituality from religion. And um, I used to teach religious studies, and I loved that the root of the word religion is um, means to tie or to bind, to sort of stitch together, to hold together. And in my mind, that can be a great thing, like holding a community together, um, keeping people with a feeling of attachment and connection. That's awesome. But it can also tie and can also be like you get your wrists tied or your feet tied and you can't move and you, you don't feel free. So it's got restriction and division, you know, boxes, barriers, all that sort of thing. Um, I think of spirituality as more fluid, personal experience. Um, religion is more a collective spiritual experience. That may or may not be your definition of spirituality or your distinction between spirituality and religion, but I hope that we can sort of take that for today and, and move with it. Um, but I do want to share a story, and again, some of you, I think, may have heard this, um, but it's where my sense of spirituality came from. This is me on the right with the curly hair, not the Wheeler shirt, but the wool sweater with my brother and my sister when I was about 13. And... Uh, I had a friend who helped raise us. Her name was Carol. And uh, she told me a story when I was around that age um, that stuck with me. And she was driving with her friend, Terry, and they were going to see a concert from New Hampshire to Rhode Island. And uh, actually, I think it was after the, yeah, it was after the show. And Carol was in the passenger seat. She checked with Terry and said, hey, are you okay to drive? Uh, Terry said, yeah, I'm fine. And Carol said, okay, well, let me know if you need help. I'm going to go to sleep. And so Carol fell asleep. And uh, in her sleep, she found herself dreaming. And in the dream, she felt this sense of something wrong. And in the dream, she turned, uh, or she, she turned and saw that they were heading towards a tree. Like she was driving in the dream, they're heading towards a tree. And she looked over to Terry, uh, or sorry, she didn't look to Terry, she felt a hand on her shoulder. And it was a glowing green hand, a large hand on her shoulder. She looked at the hand. The hand shook her. She woke up, saw that they were heading towards a tree, turned to look at Terry and saw that Terry had fallen asleep. And so she yelled, Terry, 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 wake up. Terry woke up, slammed on the brakes, and they just missed hitting the tree. And, you know, that was a crazy, crazy coincidence that in itself was was one thing but carol shaken when they got home they eventually got home they were okay um drew this hand and she was not an artist but <clears throat> she drew <clears throat> excuse me this picture of the hand which to my eye looks pretty darn <laughs> lifelike again she's never drew but she had this searing image for her and when i heard the story it's like something had moved her, right? I didn't, um, was this God? Was this luck? Was it, I don't know what it was. She didn't really know what it was, but um, it kind of didn't matter. It's just sort of this mystery had saved her and saved Terry. And I, I was just stunned by that story. So this is a kind of definition that I came to 
from that sense. So it's not doesn't have to be about a god or something else. But it's this wake awakening feeling that comes in response to engagement with this mystery. So I say the whole person practice of awakening, feeling, and expressing connection to a larger mystery. And I'll, I'll just run real quickly through each of that, each of those pieces. So whole person by that, I mean, all of who you are, the things that you've chosen and the things that you were given, the things that you strive for, the things that you learn, the things that you consider presentable or that you consider shameful, like including all of that in, in your experience. Practice meaning it's an ongoing intentional commitment, you know, like practice as, as if you're preparing for a performance or practice as an expression of something, right? Um, we'll get to that a little bit more, but awakening meaning um, spirituality is, is a sense of connecting to something that has been lying dormant and then it's coming alive. That that's, that's part of it. And then feeling means it's subjective. It's got your thoughts, your emotions, your body, your heart, your mind, all of that. Expressing as a part of spirituality, you're giving voice to something, whether it's joy or despair or wonder or connection, whatever else you're finding inside, right? And then connection to larger mystery. I used to call that God. I might still call it God, um, but it might be life or love or light or the unseen or reality. One of my, one of my dearest teachers calls it reality. But whatever the name is, it's like we're connected to something larger or greater than our smallest selves. So again, for me, this is the, a working definition of spirituality. Does that seem reasonable to folks? We, we sort of choose that for... So, okay, cool. So if we've got that, then you say, all right, uh, how is improvisation a spiritual path? And you know, how does that fit in? Uh, I want to give you... Uh, at least uh, eight ways that we might talk about that. And again, I want to move through these relatively quickly because I want to give us a chance to um, experience them more than talk about them. I think my voice might be interesting, but it's not all that interesting. So, okay, first one. Da -da -da -da, drum roll, please. Uh, is that improv includes uh, building and I mean, forming an ethic and, and building a practice. And, you know, if you take an improv class, you sort of learn the basic principles and those principles form the guidelines or the container that you use. So it might be slow down, take care of your partner, be average, those sorts of things, right? Um, the same ethics that make for a good performance make for good living. And it, it gives you a path to walk and it, helps you as a practice it helps you develop the muscles to do that walk with grace and endurance so when things are hard you sort of rely on those principles that you can fall back on them so that's the first way that we could call improvisation a spiritual path second is it puts us in touch with this notion of divine play so maybe you're familiar with hinduism and the notion of leela that that divine that play is divine it's it's the god's creating the world in this kind of like, ooh, what do we got here, right? And that any really good improv has that energy to it. That you've got this exploration that's bouncy and buoyant, and it doesn't have to be silly, but it's got a little lightness in its step because you're going down paths that you've never seen before. Um, sometimes in improv, you create obstacles just for the heck of it. And that, I think that's kind of the notion of divine play. It's like, all right, let's give this person a challenge. There it is, and watch how they overcome it, right? So when we're doing really good improv, there's more joy, more vitality, more intimacy, and uh, I think a spiritual life engenders that same kind of quality. Third one, and this maybe is the one where I have the most experience and I've, I've played with the most depth, is about the way that improvisation helps us practice mindfulness. So it's really getting present in the moment, paying close attention, opening up, pausing, sensing, learning to be able to hold complexity. All of these things uh, come out of improvisation and are directly connected to a mindfulness practice. And so uh, this kind of alertness brings life from a kind of cloudy, um, hazy 
vision to something that's in much more high definition relief. And that's sort of this image here is like, oh, what does high definition look like? I remember the first time I got a high definition TV, I was watching a, um, an image of, I think it was Batman, The Dark Knight. And the, the scene opens like you're looking at a helicopter coming in over a building. And the top of the building was covered with gravel. And I watched it on a regular DVD and it just looked like gray. And then when I put the Blu-ray in and I watched it on a Blu-ray high definition, all of a sudden I could see each pebble on top of the roof. And it was like, whoa, what is going on here? I, I think that mindfulness helps us do that with our life. The things that we couldn't see before, we suddenly see much more clearly. All right. Fourth one, improvisation helps us celebrate interdependence. So almost every wisdom tradition is going to talk about interconnectedness. You've got unity in Islam or interbeing in Buddhism, mirror cells in, in science or ecology in, the biology, in biology. Everything everything's connected. And Hinduism talks about Indra's net, uh, that there's, you know, this net that covers the entire universe and each joining point, there's a jewel and it, uh, like a uh, like a ball bearing and in each ball bearing is reflected every other ball bearing so it's like any spot on the net reflects everything else so you know if spirituality has that it's this notion of everything reflected in everything and that we're all sharing control improvisation gives us a direct experience of that and and i'm hoping that we're going to get to do that in a little bit um to play around with that a little bit so you know um any regular scene as long as it's not a monologue, people are sharing control and, and the creation is coming together as more than one person. Okay, next one. Improvisation helps us face our shadow. So uh, maybe you're familiar with the Jungian idea, but the shadow is kind of a way to represent the hidden or disowned parts of ourselves that maybe is like the greatest challenge in a spiritual life is to say to make peace with that part of ourselves and if we don't it will tend to leak through uh, projection or disruption sort of causes trouble for us and for other people if we do integrate it, it gives us greater power depth confidence peace uh, restores wholeness right so you say well how does improv help you do that uh improvisation and I should say that I'm talking about theatrical improvisation. I should have said that earlier, but um, it's a way to explore your status relationships when you're up above somebody or down below somebody. And so you can kind of play with that. If maybe you play one side of that, typically what is the other side, or maybe it's just exploring different parts of your personality, right? I tend to be a nice guy and tend to be friendly and want to be, want to be good to people. And my colleague, Lisa, who's, a great improv teacher and improvise, improviser said, you know, Ted, I'd love to see you in a scene play a bad guy. I'd love to see you be a really nasty, forgive my French, asshole. <laughs> and, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to try that out. And I've been working on that for years to try to be able to play villains in scenes more. And I'm getting better at it. But it's sort of taking this part. I like, I've got that in me. And so to be able to play with it and, and try it out, is really quite helpful. So uh, improv gives us a chance to explore the shadow. So uh, improvisation also uh, breaks us down and builds us up, right? And so it's like um, you can be totally humbled trying to do an improv scene. You can be out there and be like, I suck. <laughs> that scene totally flopped. I had no idea what to do, and it was just awful. And you get back up, and you do it again. And then you do another scene, and you feel like, oh, my God, I'm flying. This is incredible. This is the most powerful I've ever felt. So in the same way that it, like, lets us see our shadow or lets us see our interdependence so that we're, maybe we're like, oh, the me that I think is me is much larger, this is also another way that improv lets us expand our range. We see our greatness, and we see our limitedness. Uh, and we not just see it, but experience it and feel it. So I love that. And along those lines, I think this is our seventh one, improv is awesome at helping us engage paradox. So, uh, you know, expansion and limitation, um, participation and individuality, 
we're trying to be good and we're letting ourselves be average, right? All of these paradoxes are part and parcel of what improvisation is about. For me, paradox is one of the deepest spiritual truths there is. That if we sort of whatever exploration we're taking, we're going to realize actually, you know, we've got to get mature enough to be able to hold both parts of a paradox at the same time. And so God is loving and awesome. And there's incredible suffering in the world. Maybe neither of those is the ultimate truth, but somehow the combination of them is, right? I can, I can, be, um, I can look up at the stars and think, I am nothing. On a galactic scale, I don't matter. You don't matter. You know, like, who cares? This is just, we're just this tiny, tiny, tiny piece in this huge orchestration. And everything that we get so concerned about politically, financially, emotionally, relationally, just doesn't matter in that picture. And then at the same time, we have this sense that everything matters. And of course you're precious. And there's nobody like you anywhere in the entire universe. And how magic is that, right? So those are paradoxes. Those are spiritual paradoxes. Improv gives us a chance to step in and resolve those, those apparent uh, contradictions in the moment of a scene. Lastly, of these ways that improv is a spiritual path, I'll say that it opens us up to inspiration. So it's a direct path into the creativity that comes out of who knows where. But spontaneity is this notion um, of, well, actually the root of the word has to do with like getting in line with your free will. And so for me, it's like, choosing my free will to, to connect with this thing that's coming through me and to let it through, to let myself be used. I'm using my free will to let myself be used. I'm an instrument. There's a song coming through me. And so improvisation gives us a chance to, to experience that in the moment. Um, and it can be really, it can be electrifying. It can be electrifying. And sometimes people feel like, Oh, am I being possessed? Am I, is improv letting me be possessed by a demon? And I would say, um, no, it's more about participation, right? Again, choosing to let ourselves be used. So um, let me um, just do a quick review of this and then, um, and then I'll pause and we'll come chat a little bit and come back. So these are the different ways that improvisation could be a spiritual practice, right? So we're exercising ethic and building a practice we're moving into this notion of divine play. So having this bounce in our step, we get the chance to practice mindfulness in an active, interactive way. We can celebrate this interdependence. We don't have to fear it. We get the opportunity to face our shadow, get to know our shadow. We can build ourselves up so that we're soaring like that osprey, or breaking down like the shattered glass. To have those sort of ego refreshments, right? Big, small, big, small. Um, we get to engage in paradox, and we can open to inspiration. Those are eight ways that we could say that improvisation is a spiritual practice.